Welcome to part 4 of the Gearbox tutorial. This is going to be a very short video explaining how you can get gears to turn each other and make it look like your gearbox is turning. Alright, gearbox, or sorry, gear, teeth, and meshing is all about the ratios. For example, this 12 tooth gear is turning a 42 tooth gear, the ratio being 42 to 12, or sorry, 12 to 42. So when we do gear, gear meshing, the first thing we want to do is align the gear teeth as if they really were turning. For example, I can adjust this gear to make, it, make its teeth fit perfectly inside the other gear. Let's go ahead and do that for this one as well. Now let's repeat the process for the bottom gear. Alright, once this has been tuned to your preference, we can start making these turn. The first thing we're going to do is go to constrain. So just like we can constrain edges, faces, and axes, we can also constrain motion, which is the second tab. You can see that it automatically selects rotation motion. Our first selection is going to be the face of our 12 tooth gear, and our second selection is going to be the face of our 42 tooth gear. Make sure you switch to the second option. As you can see in the drawing, it shows two, two cylinders rotating in opposite directions, which is exactly the gear, what the gears are doing. Our ratio is going to be the first one, the first selection, to the second selection. So 12 divided by 42. If we were actually calculating ratios and how fast the output shaft would spin, we always go driven to driving. So the driven gear is 42 and the driving gear is 12. But in the case of doing motion constraints, Inventor looks at it as a selection thing. For example, our first selection was the 12 tooth gear and our second selection was a 42 tooth gear. So when we put in our ratio, we will be doing 12 divided by 42. And let's click apply. Let's do the same thing for the other gear. Instead, Instead of doing a motion constraint from the 12 tooth to this gear, let's do a one-to-one -one motion constraint from this gear to the other 12 tooth gear. So we constrain this one here and this one here. These two should be turning the same direction and there is a one-to-one -one con ratio on them since they're both the same number of teeth. Let's hit apply. There's also a one-to-one -one ratio for the two gears on the top shaft. We can constrain this face and this face. These two gears are turning at the same speed, therefore their ratio is one. They're also turning the same direction, so our solution is going to be forward, turning in the same direction. Let's click apply. Now, let's do it for this gear here and this gear here. This face to this face switch to the second option and let's input our ratio I don't remember exactly what the first gear was so let's open up the plate and figure out how many teeth were in here sketch one zoom in we can see that it goes from a 12 to a 42 to a 30 tooth gear and the bottom one it connects to happens to be a 50 tooth gear so going back to our assembly and doing a motion constraint, we know that our ratio going in opposite directions is going to be 30 divided by 50. Hit apply. The last thing that is going to be indicative of motion on our gearbox is the sprocket. This sprocket is spinning at the same speed as this gear, so we can do a motion constraint on these two. Make sure you carefully select that face. Make them turn the same direction. Check to see the ratio is 1 to 1 and hit apply. Alright, now I have all my ratios set in place. If I turn this gear, the next gear should turn, as well as the next gear and the bottom sprocket. Fantastic. You can see no matter how much I turn it, the teeth will still appear as if they're meshing, because that's what I originally started with. I manually showed that they were meshing, then I added motion constraints with the right ratios, 
and now they're meshing in the end. This, you can see all the directions match up as if this was turning in real life. While this gear is turning clockwise, this gear is turning counterclockwise, this gear is turning counterclockwise, and the bottom gear is turning clockwise, just as I would expect. Fantastic.